Soak Reality sent me their new 3D scanner, which is this CR Scan Lizard. And we're going to check it out and see what it can do and what it can't do. So let's get started. And as you can see, it came in a very basic box with just the details of the printer on the front and back of it. And you can see all the specifications and stats of it on the back. Not the most interesting thing in the world, so let's get this out of the box and see what's in here. It does have its own nice carrying case to keep everything together. And inside, right on the top, of course, is the user's manual. And like most people, I'm going to just put this aside and not use it until I run into a problem. And then under this flap is all the rest of the parts. And right on the top is a turntable top, and it looks like it's not attached to the turntable motor, so you can just take this off. And of course right underneath this is the turntable motor itself. And around all that was the wires and power supply for this. And included in this kit is a tiny tripod that is telescoping. And the last part that's the most important is the actual 3D scanner itself. And this actually has a little bit of a heft to it, and it's much heavier than other 3D scanners I've used. I don't know if that's going to mean anything different for this one, but we'll see. There's also a thumb drive that has all the software to run this. Setup is pretty straightforward, you just screw your tripod into the scanner, and open up the legs on the tripod. There's one port on the side of the scanner, and there's just one port that plugs into it. And you just match up the red marks and it will lock in place. The other end of this plug actually has two ports. One is for power that you plug into the black power supply and the other goes into your computer. The turntable just uses a USB power cable and it can plug into either your computer or if you have a charger, you can plug it into that. And as we saw in the beginning, the top of this just kind of sits on top of it and it will turn on its own as long as it has power. So with everything set up, let's actually scan something. And I'm going to be scanning this wheel hub. But as you can see, it's extremely shiny. So I'm going to spray it with this spray that is going to put a kind of chalk finish over it. So it'll actually pick up on the scanner. And after letting it dry, you can see that it's completely coated in this white powder. And to show you why I did this, I'm going to try scanning the other hub without the spray on it. And as you can see in the scanning software, it's just not picking it up. And if it does, it's very little bits. And this is just due to it being reflective, and the scanner using light to scan its object. No matter how bright I turn up the settings on this, it won't reliably pick it up. But if I put the other one that has the coating on it, the scanner can pick it all up and see everything. So let me start my first scan and see how this turns out. And there we go, it looks like it got everything pretty good, but it's also missing the top and the bottom areas. So you can reposition this on the bed and do another scan. And you might also notice that the scanner is picking up the turntable, which is totally fine, and we're going to remove that before finishing everything. And I'm going to have to align all of these and mesh them together in the right way, so it actually makes a solid piece. Because as you can see, this is just a jumble of stuff right now. So in this software, you can remove the base by selecting two parts of it, and then just doing a basement selection, and it'll select all of that area. And then you can go around and select all the rest of it, and just delete it. And there's a lot of manual cleanup that you can do to make sure your parts are going to come out as clean as possible. And it is time consuming, and you need to do it for each scan. So it makes it a little more involved when scanning with this scanner. And with everything cleaned up, now I need to align everything so I make one model. And to do this, I'm going to do it manually by placing three different points and telling it to align. And I'm going to have to do this with every scan to build my mesh. There is an auto function to do this, but it doesn't work well for the things that I've done so far. And the only way I've gotten it to work properly is to align my pieces next to one another in the same orientation and then push auto. And it seems to get it about... 70% of the time. With all of that done, I can hit the process button on the right hand side of the screen and then make sure to click fill holes for this one and then click go basically. This will basically take my point cloud and turn it into a solid mesh that I can work with in 3D programs or even save it as a STL and just 3D print this as it is. And as you can see, this didn't come out perfect. There are some weird spots and some little extra bits on here that more cleanup would have helped and more scans would probably make this a better model. And there are tools in this software to help you remove these if you want to go through manually and do so. And one of the major things that this thing is boasting is its accuracy. So I'm going to bring the scan into Fusion 360 and do some measurements. So the outer bearing housing is 
68.37 millimeters on this scan. And on the actual part, it is 68.25 millimeters, which is very close. And I'm just going to measure the center part of the other side, and that is 53.8 millimeters. And when we come into the software, it is almost exactly the same. So more than good enough for what I would be using this for. Oh, and if you're worried about this spray that I put on everything, it washes off and comes off pretty easily, as you can see. But anyways, let's try out the hands-free mode and scan something a little more difficult. These kind of scanners typically don't pick up black very well, and there's lots of different colors and blacks in here, so we'll find out. And to my surprise, this is actually doing a really good job on picking everything up and keeping up with my movement. The only problem is I keep moving too far away or too close, so it loses alignment. But once I got my spacing down, everything went really smooth. And I was able to do multiple scans and align them and make an actual workable piece. So if I needed to make something for this, yeah, I would be able to and fit perfectly. I tried to do some scans of some body panels and stuff on the car and it was working pretty good, but it lost some alignment on some of the areas that were just a solid color, so it didn't have any reference. And some markers would really help with this. They're little stickers that you just stick on so it knows where it's at. So all the stuff I scanned so far are larger items, so let's scan something a little bit smaller, like this Magikarp. This was a 3D print that I did in a previous video, and I just wanted to see how much detail it would pick up and how it would pick up some of these smaller bits on this. And yes, I know Magikarp is not the most detailed thing, but it has a lot of nice flat surfaces, and it is smaller. So after all the scanning and my really quick, shoddy cleanup job, here is the finished piece. And it looks like it captured almost all the details perfectly. And you can see that there's some extra stuff on here. It's just because I didn't clean up everything in the post-processing step of this. So let's go a little more smaller and a little more detailed with this miniature. And with everything said and done, it came out like this, which kind of looks like the original, but these are kind of the limitation of the scanner. It's a little too small for it. And last but not least, I'm going to scan this white bust. And this is almost a perfect scenario for a scannable object. And after all my cleanup and everything, it came out almost perfect. So depending on how much prep work you're going to do to your piece, so it's going to be scannable, and how much you clean it up before actually fusing and processing everything, it makes a world of difference. So to sum everything up, this is a really good 3D scanner, and it does a great job at getting accurate scans. But there are some downsides to it as well. The software is not 100% stable at all times, and I've had it crash multiple times on me. Creality has told me that they're going to be doing updates on the software anyways, so it should fix these problems. And it does require you to do a lot of cleanup on your pieces after scanning, so just keep that in mind. And the other thing I would like for it to be able to do to be more mobile is to work with a tablet or phone. Right now it only works with a computer, and I don't know if there's plans for that in the future or not. But honestly, with the amount of processing power that it's using when I'm using the computer, I don't think that it's going to work with a phone or tablet. So if you are interested in getting one of these, Creality is going to be starting a Kickstarter for it, and this will start on February 10th, 2022, which is in just a couple days of when I posted this video. So if you'd like to get one earlier at a discounted price, you can always back their Kickstarter, and I'll have a link in the description below to that once it's available. From what I've seen, I believe there are three different kits that you can get that have different tools that go along with the scanner itself, all at different price points. But anyways, that pretty much sums up everything. And if you have any questions, leave a comment. If you liked this video and found it helpful, leave a like. And subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Well, thanks for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.